Hey guys, today we have part two of my Sephora haul. I do reviews with all my hauls. If there's an item you're interested in, maybe my review will sway you one way or another, but that's what the reviews are for. I actually wanted to start out the video with something kind of cool. I actually colored my own hair. No, I'm serious. In part one of this video, actually, my hair was totally different. I've never done anything color-wise to my hair by myself in my entire lifetime. This is not a message for all of you guys to do things yourself, but I was like, you know what? I've gotten my hair done enough times. I think I could manage it, and here we are. I'm pretty impressed with myself. Okay, let's get into the haul now, for real, for real. I have a giant bin, and I'm just grabbing things from it. The first thing I grabbed is the Natasha Denona Safari Palette. It's an all matte palette, and I love the color variety because it's not just nudes. You have purples, reds, this amazing orange, you have an olive green, you have blues, just a lot of variety to play with as well as colors in different depths. So you have super dark colors, you have medium tone colors, and then lighter colors. This is just a really great all-in-one palette. I think these eyeshadows just blend like a dream. Just like all the other Natasha Denona colors and palettes, I'm absolutely in love with this one. I am wearing it on my eyes. I'm wearing like literally everything I talk about on my face and everything that's on my face will be in the info box down below. If you are looking for a matte palette that's something a little more unique, I would suggest it. Natasha Denona is extremely expensive. I personally think she's worth it. Like look at that blue. That's so stunning. You can create a lot of really beautiful looks by itself, but also as an accompaniment to literally any look. The next palette is another Natasha Denona one. It is the Natasha Denona Gold Palette. You guys are gonna hate me because I got a lot of things that were just, mmm, so good. And funnily enough, I got a lot of things expecting to not really like them, like to just be disappointed in them. And not everything is for everyone, but quality-wise, a lot of brands really have just been nailing it. Natasha Denona, yet again, different from the Safari palette in that you have a variety of finishes. You have her metallic sparkly foil finishes, you have more of just a metallic finish, and then you have her mattes. What I love about this palette, similar to the Safari palette, actually is that it's unique gold palette means everything pretty much is warm you have different versions of gold with different undertones different foiled effects um, this one right here actually has like a shift which you can kind of see when I tilt it I think of like a greeny copper brown I feel like it's a waste of a palette if all the eyeshadows are too similar and everything you do with the palette looks the same there's really no point like look at that one how insane it's literally three different shades they blend so well you need the tiniest touch on your brush and they stay on really all day like they're very very pigmented which makes it worth it to me this is the Natasha Denona cranberry palette also expensive okay but more affordable than the giant palette Palettes and just the quality guys it's so crazy I try a lot of stuff so I feel like if things just didn't perform well there's no reason for me to tell you guys that it's worth it but this is totally worth it I mean this one and this one are mattes and they feel and apply almost like a cream to powder if you don't own Natasha Denona or you know you want to give someone a really special gift who loves makeup do Natasha Denona as much as I love Natasha Denona Pat McGrath Still my queen. Okay, so these are three eyeshadow palettes that she released. There's six pans in each eyeshadow palette. Before we talk about product, can we talk about the packaging, please? Everything just looks so regal and official, but also not over the top. So the Metamorphosis palette is six different metallic shimmer shades. Now, all the Pat McGrath shades feel like a cream to powder finish. They're all so super super pigmented blend so beautifully i mean they are similar to natasha denona but there is just something about my queen that is unreal look at how intensely foil they are and i literally did like one swish around her pan. Now Pat McGrath again is another expensive brand but you need very little to pack a punch. These look and feel luxurious and expensive but most importantly the quality is just absurdly good. This here is the Bronze Temptation palette. 
you have two matte shades and the rest are all shimmery shades. This is a matte shade and the rest are all shimmery. Her multi-dimensional colors, like ones that are duochromes or multi-chromes, all are so bold and stunning that they really pack a punch just being a pressed eyeshadow, which is kind of, I think, hard to find in pressed eyeshadows. Sometimes they just have like one duochrome, but hers have like five different shades in them and they all show up. And then this one is Dark Stars. You have two matte shades and her black, look how intense that black eyeshadow is. This is the charcoal and then that's the blue and it's made by an amazing makeup artist and same thing with Natasha Denona which is what I think makes their items stand out because they're in the business they know what it takes they know where the need gaps are and they know what quality is and they just perform every single time this is from Kevin Aquan another amazing amazing makeup artist this is the nude pop eyeshadow palette you have pretty much neutrals across the board with certain pops as far as the finishes you have this really chunky super stunning copper it just is so reflective and that's how all three of these shades are the main difference I feel here is that the mattes for Kevin Aquan applies like a dream but it swatches I think not the same way or with the same impact that it does when you apply it onto the eyes so if you do go check this out try it on your eyes Charlotte Tilbury bar of gold palette which has the same formula as the bar of gold with three different shades it looks super super tiny you get 7.5 grams of product in here and you have a really light gold like a creamy gold more of a pinky champagne and then a slightly bronzed gold these bar of gold shades sit on the skin like radiance i have it on right now i'm wearing these two shades right now it's not chunky it's not powdery it does not emphasize fine lines and texture i have not run into that issue you can wear it blend it out you can really intensify it like you can really get to this blinding highlight. I really love this formula. I think it is overpriced. However, I will still use this. If she comes out with more shades, I will most likely try them. It is beautiful product. This is in the shade Uncuffed. This is actually my first Sana lip paint from Fenty. Not only is this color amazing, this formula is so beautiful. It feels kind of watery and then it dries down into a matte. It is very, very thin and it feels like nothing's on the lips. Now, if you have dry lips or if you live in an area that is drier or colder, I would suggest wearing lip balm before you apply this or bringing a lip balm and you can put it on top of this. It's not a typical doe foot applicator. It almost looks like it has like a flattened ball at the top, but one swipe and that's the coverage you get and that's the shade uncuff these little things are so stinking cute but also really good quality they're the kaja eyeshadow like trio powers i don't know this is a brand that's new to sephora each one of these comes with a little mirror here and then three different eyeshadows that are all in the same compact which i think are so cute now heads up all of these eyeshadows and all of these little towers are shimmery glittery none of them are matte but this is such an amazing accompaniment and also so pretty to just blend all over the lid and slightly up into the crease and put mascara on so this trio is rose water and look how pigmented they are the bouncy effect makes them look wet they look amazing on top of other eyeshadows that's how i've been using these the most this one is sparkling rose and then this one is orange blossom guys they're really 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 stunning i have one more this is nude caramel and these are the shades in nude caramel A product from jouer that i'm obsessed with is the jouer essential high coverage liquid concealer it gives me amazing full coverage but it doesn't make my under eyes look drier or crepier than they actually are. Super easy to blend out, really comfortable, and it just gives you that perfected skin look. This is the Milk Makeup Blur Liquid. It's supposed to be a matte foundation. I really freaking like this, and I was shocked. Most matte foundations just don't work for me because they emphasize texture, they grab onto things, things that I don't even see normally. This doesn't do any of those things. It sits so beautifully on the skin. It 
blurs your skin, genuinely blurs my pores. I have large pores right in here, which usually get covered up by the time I put my powder on and all of that. But this alone, every single time I wear it, my skin looks so even. And then makeup sits so beautifully on top of it. This is the foundation I have on today. The box says, it's a long wearing matte finish weightless silicone free formula that won't clog pores so skin can breathe. Um, blurring microspheres minimize the, minimize the appearance of pores, fine lines and imperfections for smooth flawless looking skin. Formula is housed in a mess free no drip airtight packaging. It feels like I have nothing on my face. If you're using a beauty blender with this, even though it is silicone free, blend this in by like dragging it okay if you bounce your beauty blender i feel like the finish isn't quite as good as if you drag it i still use my beauty blender but i will just do either small dragging motions or i'll do rolling motions rather than just bouncing motions with this one because i feel like dragging it across the face is what really gives it that blurring technology and I think it like bursts the microspheres that help to blur so you can totally use your fingers you can use a brush however you want to but really like this this concealer it's the Huda Beauty overachiever concealer I'm blown away okay another product that I didn't think I was gonna like because I saw it as so full coverage and I was like there's no way it's not gonna feel like a million pounds under my eyes the key behind this is because it is so full coverage is to use very little you want to just add the tiniest bit at a time and build it most times you won't even need to build it um, because it is highly emollient which means that it blends out so so beautifully like it just melts into the skin it is super full coverage i have never had this much coverage when i've put on this little amount of product it's super long wearing it does increase under my eyes this one has a metal tip applicator which i think is cool it's cooling so when you're applying it it helps with circulation and kind of cools the eye area so if you have any puffiness it just feels really nice on your eyes this is the giorgio armani neo nude fusion powder foundation it's a very expensive powder it's giorgio armani it gave me the idea that it was going to be great for dry skin because it was going to be super creamy and almost hydrating on the skin and it kind of is this is what the powder inside looks like i have mine in the shade 5.5 the only thing i don't like about this is that there's not enough shades feels like a cream you get pretty decent coverage like i think it's definitely buildable if you were to use like a denser brush it has what looks like a sheen to it but it doesn't look shimmery on the skin i think that just helps kind of blur the skin and gives you this really luminous look this is the sugar peach wet and dry face and eye palette from too faced this is a sephora exclusive because it's part of their peach line and it comes with four shades this was going to be another pass of mine but then i saw a Marie Z talking about it in her stories and I was like no no I need that what's cool about this palette is it's meant to be used wet or dry personally I haven't really used it wet because I don't see the need to the powders are incredibly pigmented and they're so stinking buttery brands are just getting it you know they're just getting it the bit whoa what was that um my favorite way to use these is as highlighters or blush toppers primarily this peach one has glitters in it but the glitters don't really translate onto the skin they actually just kind of like flop around which i'm not a huge fan of this is not an absolute necessity but it is beautiful and you do get a variety in one palette this is the tom ford traceless foundation stick i love tom ford i think that they have really amazing product and stuff that I wasn't a huge fan of previously they have revamped and it is now in fact incredible and I love everything which sucks because Tom Ford is so expensive their foundations are beautiful they look like skin feel like skin act like skin and the traceless foundation stick is no exception this is in the shade 5.5 it glides on it stays on it gives me really nice coverage but it's totally buildable it kind of gives you a velvet finish which i like because if you have oily skin i still think you can use this because it does dry down to that velvety finish but if you have dry skin if you make sure you're exfoliated and hydrated you'll be fine and you can still use this i have combo skin especially in the winter and i haven't had an issue with this plus it looks so luxe because it's 
top for you. This is disgusting because I just used it today. Um, also from Pat McGrath, this is her Highlight Balm Stick Duo. I have mine, I believe in the shade Gold. Um, what is this called? Golden Skin Fetish Highlighter Plus Balm Duo. The reason why I really enjoy the Pat McGrath formula though is because it sits on the skin beautifully and it can be applied over powder even. It doesn't move what's underneath. It has a drier cream feeling. So once it sets, it feels like nothing is on the skin. And when you put powder over it, it doesn't catch, it doesn't pull patchy, it doesn't soak up the powder because of the texture. And then this is the bomb side, which I think is really cool. It just gives your skin a natural gloss, which is great if you are doing kind of an editorial look or if you have no makeup on at all and you just wanted to give yourself a natural looking highlight, it's an awesome duo that works a lot of different ways. This is a Shiseido uh, Minimalist Whipped Powder Blush. So Shiseido just did a massive rehaul overhaul rehaul of their brand and they came out with all these amazing new items including this whipped blush there's a bunch of different colors i have mine in the shade sonoya one it literally looks like colored whipped cream it blends out so nicely and it leaves you with like a wash of color almost like a stain rather than a really intense layer of color. It does have a silicone-y texture, so the only thing that I have an issue with with this is that sometimes it can get a little patchy because I feel like that silicone-y slip to it has it gathering and not blending out super evenly, um, but it's really easy to manipulate, so it is easy to just go in there and get an even layer of color. This is the Pat McGrath Gold Astral Lip Fetish Lip Balm. This is a lip balm, okay? It's overpriced, you don't need to buy this. I bought it because, like I said, Pat McGrath is my queen and I will buy everything she comes out with. It's a lip balm and it has a gold and pink shimmer running through it, but the shimmer is done so finely that it really just makes your lips look super hydrated. It is a nice lip balm. Is this my absolute favorite lip balm? Absolutely not. Do I feel super chic whipping this out in public and reapplying it? 100%. Do I reapply it more because of that reason? Yes, I do. It is a really pretty color on the lips, especially if you're not wearing anything. I'm not gonna lie, Fenty Gloss Balm is my go-to as far as just like my throw-on lip color, but this was just something I had to have. And it comes in a bunch of different colors. This is one of her newer, Nude Romantique 071 is the shade, but it's the Blitz Trance Lipstick. So this is a highly metallic lipstick, and this is what this shade looks like. So it's a bright corally shade, and it has tons of gold, glitter flex running through it. I think this in the summer is gonna look super gorgeous. Her Lux Trans and her Matte Trans lipsticks, some of my favorite lipstick formulas, period. But this one is nice, it's not my favorite, but it is a pretty color and I like the finish because I think it's metallic done really subtly, so it's a lot more wearable. And are you kidding me? Look at this packaging, look at that. I 100% bought this for the packaging. I got three of the artist color pencils from Makeup Forever. I have Total Taupe, Limitless Brown, and Endless Cocoa. I am wearing Endless Cocoa with another product um, that I will show you guys in a minute, but I have just been looking for really good neutral nude kind of shades and browns, warm browns, cool browns, because I think that they're really flattering with so many different colors. So this is Endless Cocoa. This one is uh, Limitless Brown, and then this one is Total Taupe. The formula of these is great. They are wooden pencils, which I love, and I really love the color selections, especially for lips, not so much for eyes. The item that I'm wearing with that is actually a Nude Sticks Matte Lip and Cheek Pencil, and this is in the shade Whisper. I've heard so much about this, but I just wasn't on the Nude Stick bandwagon until like just now. This is what the shade Whisper looks like. It is such a pretty nude and it can be so easily manipulated with different lip liners or glosses. I think it's amazing for all 
skin tones. Plus it's a super, super comfortable matte formula. It's really creamy and it just blends onto the lips really nicely. This bad boy totally took me by surprise. I picked this up on a whim because I am on the lookout for just the perfect nude for all kinds of skin tones. This one is in the shade Tan Lines. This is one of their lip stories from Sephora. It's just Sephora brand. It's a brownie mauvey pinky nude oh wow it's really similar to whisper huh it almost just looks a tad more brown and like muted than whisper does i can even mm. it's just so creamy and buttery but also very pigmented and i love this color i feel like if you have fairer skin or even deeper skin than me just generally speaking if you're looking for a nude lipstick go try this out it is not a matte so it's not gonna give you a matte lip, but it is creamy, it's super comfortable, it's very pigmented, and they're pretty affordable. This is one of the new YSL The Slim lipsticks. These are matte, and I have mine in the shade 17. I really like these. I think they're a weird shape because they're a diamond, but at the same time when you're applying it, it kind of allows you to get a sharp line around the lips, which is cool. The formula is awesome. It is super pigmented, creamy, applies nicely, and it kind of stains. So they're very long wearing. Like this, once it sets, will actually leave a stain on my hand, which I kind of like, especially with like the reds and oranges. The stain is so beautiful with those. This is from Giorgio Armani. This is the Rouge d'Armani Matte, and this is a newer formula, and it's really good. This is so thin and lightweight on the lips and it's so pigmented but when you wear it you need just one coat of it. It is literally full coverage in one coat and once it sets it almost sets like a liquid lipstick like you just don't feel it on your lips. So this here is in the shade 501 and they touch up really nicely. They're not going to build up and feel kind of crusty or flaky and if you have drier lips this is definitely not going to emphasize any kind of dryness or enhanced dryness on your lips either. Neither is the YSL one actually. They are both pretty like moussey matte formulas almost. This is from Dior. It's the Rouge Dior Ultra Rouge and I have mine in the shade 325 Ultra Tender. This is pretty much a full coverage classic cream lipstick. I felt like Dior used to have these and I don't know if this is what replaced those. I hope it didn't because there were some other colors there that I really, really loved. But this is just such a pretty nude, neutral, middle of the road nude, into it, really comfortable on the lips. Not incredibly long wearing because it is a thinner, creamier, almost hydrating formula. Um, but it looks amazing on the lips because it is a creamy, hydrating formula. <laughs> the last item is so expensive. Mm, but I had to do it because I'm... In love this is a Killian fragrance to begin with this box is so bougie I wish my name started with K because I'm going to keep this box to put things into because it's just so cool what I hate about myself is that in the packaging there was like this little key with a tassel and I was like that's freaking stupid threw it out this box has a lock and I literally through the key to this lock away. Won't do that again. <laughs> the fragrance that I got from Killian is Straight to Heaven White Crystal. Before I take this out, can we just look at how it's placed in here? It looks like a baby in its crib. The bottle itself is so pretty. I'm also pretty sure that these you can actually buy refills for. And the bottle on the side has all of these cool embossing. It's just details that make it look and feel very bougie. It smells like sandalwood, amber, white flower slightly. Oh my god, it's so good. Super sexy smell in my opinion. With fragrances, I would look at the notes you see online, but I would definitely like get things or go to the store, try them and spray them because online, if I read this, I was not interested. But like in person, I'm obsessed. So 
try things out walk around the store and see how you feel because you may fall in love with something you didn't think you would that brings me to the end of part two of my sephora haul i hope you guys enjoyed and hopefully found some of these reviews helpful if you guys have any video requests leave them in the comments down below and i will get to them asap but until next time thank you guys as always so much for tuning in and i'll catch you soon bye